my name is Amy Ryan. I am the Associate Dean for Graduate Affairs in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at McGill. And it's really my pleasure to welcome you here this evening and to, um, to just, from wherever you're joining, feel free to put it in the chat. But we really are glad that you're joining us to find out a little bit more about the programs that are going on at McGill and why they might be of interest to you. Um, we are just as we just had our land acknowledgement, we're joining you from Jojage, which is Montreal, and it is unceded territory. And we do recognize uh, the care keepers of this land for generations, um, our Indigenous uh, people who have uh, recognized and respect these nations and been stewards of the land as a, as a meeting place for us. And I encourage you for, if you know where you're joining from, you can put that in the chat as well. And um, I encourage everyone to just always be learning a little bit more about our lands. Um, with that, I just wanna welcome you. So I'm hoping that some of you are still questioning, still wondering what you're gonna do next. And thinking, you know, you've, you may be just completing a BSc, you may have worked for a few years, you may be completing a Bachelor of Arts, and you may be wondering what is next? What am I gonna do? I am, I am puzzled, I am confused. And so um, I hope you've come to the right place and that we'll be able to inspire you with a few options for you to begin next year. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of our Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences and how graduate students fit into our faculty. We're gonna then hear from our graduate programs within the faculty. And then there's gonna be an opportunity at the end for you to go into specific Zoom uh, rooms. So there you've been provided the links. We may also be sharing that in the chat later, but to go into those rooms and interact with uh, the graduate program directors, graduate program coordinators, as well as graduate students who are currently in those programs. And feel free to ask any and all questions. If you have more general questions about our programs, you can stay in the sort of main meeting room and uh, a few of us will be here to answer those types of questions. So who is McGill's Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences? Well, I think right away people think, oh, that's, you know, you've got an undergraduate medical school and we do, we have almost uh, over 750 undergraduate medical students, as well as our resident and fellows um, in their training programs. We also have health profession programs. And so there's approximately a thousand health profession undergraduates. And then we have our undergraduate science students and we have about 1600 undergraduate students, but you guys have done those programs. And so what about graduate studies? So for our graduate programs, we have over 2000 graduate students who are roughly split between master's level thesis students, master's non-thesis students and PhD students. In addition to the programs that are directly in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, we have interfaculty programs and they're here this evening to tell you a bit about them. So they sit partly within our faculty and that many of the supervisors of those projects are in our faculty, but they're an interfaculty between, um, for, between medicine and engineering or medicine and science. Um, and so we're gonna, we're really happy to welcome those programs as well here tonight. In addition to our graduate students, we have approximately 300 to 350 postdoctoral fellows. And then there's about 800 research faculty. If you look at our enrollment, um, approximately 25% of our graduate students are international and they come from over 60 countries around the globe. In some of our programs, in fact, our international students reach almost 50%. The other thing is that we have a great amount of diversity, even um, about 60% of our graduate students are female. And within our programs, we're all actively working to support diversity at all levels. Um, and from, from all, all diversity within our own country, but as well global diversity within our programs. Within Montreal, that, that sort of red uh, spot here, that's where the main campus of McGill is. And we have many research buildings on our main campus, but we also have programs that are distributed sort of around the city. So we have um, programs at the Research Institute of the McGill University Health Center, um, at the Lady Davis Research Institute, which is associated with the Jewish General Hospital, at the Neuro, which is associated with the Montreal Neurological Hospital, at the Douglas, which is a research center on, on mental health, and at the IRCM, which is associated 
um, at the Institut de Recherche Clinique de Montréal. And it's at these sites that many of our students um, coexist in hospital affiliated research sites. As well, we have numerous other sites uh, around the city where our students are located. So some of the reasons that you should apply to our faculty um, is that we remain the sort of the number one medical doctoral university for the past 15 years, according to McLean's. Um, we are also a really vibrant educational and research rich, rich milieu in North America. And you'll find in our programs, we have some of the best and brightest health professions in uh, health professionals, as well as scientists and among our graduate students. We have 35 distinct research centers and institutes and more than 20 departments. And we collaborate across disciplines, across professions and across borders. But most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, but equally importantly, is that Montreal is really an amazing city. It's multicultural. And I think what's important for students when they're considering is that you can afford to live here. And it's a pretty student friendly city in terms of activities that are going on outside the university. So those are four reasons, but now I'm gonna turn it over to our graduate programs and give you sort of 20 even better reasons why you should be considering a graduate program in our faculty. And with that, we are gonna begin with the cell biology program in the um, Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. Hi there, so I'm Corbin Black and I'm a third year PhD student within the um, Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. It's, an, it's a really interesting field. It's, uh, it has a really broad range um, of topics and, and, uh, and studies that go on. Overall, we could say that this department focuses on uh, assembly, structure, function, and dynamics of various complexes and cellular processes. And these, uh, the interests um, and the research topics span um, from everything from structural biology of a particular maybe protein in a test tube, all the way up to a signaling pathway that may be found in um, mice or, or uh, nematodes. On top of that, the research that goes on within the department is spread throughout several different facilities, such as um, Lady Davis, um, the, the Neuro Institute, Strathcona Anatomy and Cell Biology. Now, we are aware of that. Um, it's sometimes nice having um, very different fields uh, and, and research approaches, but we are also aware and working on bringing the community together so that there's also the, the networking and the social um, advantages of being in a very diverse department. Could we get to the next uh, slide? Awesome, thank you. And on top of, uh, on top of that, um, you have excellent um, mentors, both uh, formally through a professor that's assigned to you on top of having your, your, your fellow students providing you um, with uh, resources. There are seminars that go on all throughout as well as social events. At the end of this, when you have your um, master's or you have your PhD, you can go on to any number of things, including academia, going into medicine or going into industry. Thanks, Corbin. Our next program we're going to hear from is biochemistry. Yeah, so hi, I'm Quinn. I'm one of the co-presidents of our Biochemistry Graduate Student Society. And today I'll talk to you about graduate studies in biochemistry. I'm kind of flipping the slide. Uh, so uh, within biochemistry, uh, we're very research centric uh, and there's a wide uh, variety of research interests, everything ranging from um, translational control, receptor signaling, neurobiology, stem cell biology, virology, metabolism, et cetera. Um, and it's overall quite a collaborative environment and, and quite diverse, which is um, fantastic. And I have to move to the next slide. Thank you. And we have a couple of uh, affiliated groups that a number of our students and, and PIs fall under. First is the uh, Rosalind and Morris Goodman Cancer Research Center, which has state-of-the-art technology for cancer research. And their main goals are trying to unravel the complexity of cancer and also collaborating towards finding a cure. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. There's also the CRBS, which is the Center of Research for uh, Structural Biology. Uh, and so uh, within here, there's cutting edge research within that field and a wide variety of modern biophysical equipment is available if you end up doing your research here. Um, and within the department, we have two programs, uh, the master's and PhD. If you're a master's, this is a two or three year program um, with the option to uh, fast track 
into year two of the PhD program after your first year. And for PhD students, if you're starting uh, without uh, with a bachelor's only, you start in year one. If you're starting uh, with a master's, you start in year two, and then you have up to year seven to complete the program. Uh, and for career opportunities, looking at uh, previous students in the department, so master's student, there's a, a pretty um, equal distribution across academic research, research staff, uh, healthcare professionals, public and private sector. For PhD students, there are opportunities within all these fields as well, although a higher percentage do end up going to either academic research or the private sector. Uh, and finally, our Biochemistry Graduate Student Society, uh, we're a group of, of volunteer students who organize social and academic events to hopefully enrich your time while you're here. Um, and for the final slide, uh, if you have any other uh, questions, uh, please look at the link below. Thank you. Thanks, Quinn. And now we're going to move on to one of our um, interfaculty programs, the Biological and Biomedical Engineering. Hi, uh, so I'm a PhD student in Biological and Biomedical Engineering. Um, and if you can just click the next animation. So Biological and Biomedical Engineering is a program that is interfaculty, as just mentioned. So the bioengineering is in the engineering faculty, whereas biomedical engineering is in medicine. And so this allows us to have uh, innovative and groundbreaking projects with uh, world-class researchers in topics from molecular and cellular engineering to signals, systems, and computational modeling. Uh, then the next animation. Uh, so we're actually the first biomedical engineering department in Canada, which was established in 1989. However, our biological and biomedical engineering unit was actually formed in 1966. Uh, and then the next part, yes. So we have a master's of engineering thesis program as well as a PhD program. Um, applicants would either have a degree in engineering or a related field. I came from biochemistry and I just had to take one extra course in math. Um, also for the PhD program, it's sort of the same story. Um, and there is the option to fast track in your first 18 months into the PhD program from the master's program, which I also did. So if you have questions, uh, you can ask later. Uh, in terms of your application, it's important at the time of your application to, or beforehand to contact a potential research supervisor because you need to be accepted by the supervisor before you apply to the program. Uh, some benefits of the program are that you learn about a wide variety of fields, including courses in biology, engineering, and industrial applications. Uh, you'll also gain research skills in problem solving and critical thinking, which are translational to many careers. Um, and you'll also have a diverse network of peers. So if you don't know something, you'll probably know someone who does, uh, which is very helpful. Um, we also have quite a vibrant student life from our biological and biomedical student society. Um, so last year, everything was kind of virtual, but we made it work and hopefully there'll be more in-person events uh, in future years. Uh, and then next slide. Our graduates go on to pursue exciting careers in industry, healthcare, academia, government, and startups. And if you want more information, you can go to our website or send us an email, or in our case now, we can meet in the Zoom later. So thank you. Thanks, Emily. The next program for something completely different, we're going to switch to a Master's of Science in Public Health. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm the Program Director of uh, the MSCPH program. We are uh, within EBOH, so within the Department of Epidemiology, Biostatistics and Occupational Health, but we have a number of different programs within this department, and I will only talk about the MSCPH program today. So I used to start these types of presentations explaining what public health is. I'm not sure I have to do that anymore. That's one of the consequences of the pandemic is that everybody knows now what public health does. But I think it's important to point out that we're not just looking at, you know, infectious diseases, but it's it really public health is really about organized societal efforts to help people stay healthy, prevent injuries and illness and premature death, and that we work a lot around programs, services and policies to protect um, people, in our case, Canadians, but this could apply for every country around the world. Um, I will talk more in detail about the program uh, during the uh, breakout groups, but just in a nutshell, basically, uh, in terms of who should apply to the program, our students come from very diverse backgrounds, and we have a number of international students, so you know, people from basic science, health science, engineering, social science, so it's a very mixed, you know, bag of, of backgrounds, uh, which makes the program really interesting to work in and, and study in. 
Um, most of our applicants, so, so to be successful to apply to the program, you need a good uh, qualitative background because your first year pretty much is the same as an EPI program. So you have lots of EPI and stats classes. So you need at least two university level courses in calculus or statistics um, to be successful in applying to the program. And we get a lot of questions about the CGPA. So the the minimum CGPA is 3.0, but uh, our students generally have an average uh, CGPA of 3.6. <clears throat> and this is an overview of what the program looks like. You can look at the website for more details and what the courses are and so on and so forth. But we are a 60 credit program. Uh, like I said, you know, there's a bunch of EPI and Biostats pro, uh, courses in there for 18 credits. Um, so overall, you have 48 credits of coursework. Of those, you have 40, 24 that are required courses in your first year. And then your second year, you have 24 credits from elective courses. And in the between those two years, we have a 12 credit practicum. So it's, a, it's a, you know, 14 to 16 week practicum in applied placements. Um, and I can talk more about what that looks like later. Thank you. Our next program is experimental medicine. Hello, everyone. My name is Amelia Martinez, and I'm a PhD student at the Division of Experimental Medicine. And today I want to tell you exactly what sets the experimental medicine programs apart from other programs. And it is that the Division of Experimental Medicine offers world-class translational research opportunities for graduate students in interdisciplinary settings. So laboratories are located at McGill University at its, and its affiliated research institutes. What's most, this means that the students are able to pursue cutting edge medical research in a unique environment provided by the Division of Experimental Medicine in which PhDs and MDs research, researchers collaborate closely, favoring translational research. And if you're not sure what uh, translational research is, in a few words, it means that the research of today has a direct impact on the way diseases are understood and treated tomorrow. The uniqueness of the Division of Experimental Medicine has allowed graduate students to, to have careers in all paths, industry, government, and academia. So if you're interested in taking medical research from bench to bench site, make sure to join us on the Zoom meeting of the Division of Experimental Medicine and to visit the website or send an email. The information can be found on the bottom of this slide. And now if you were wondering which options do I have as a part of the Experimental Medicine uh, Division, well, the division has a broad range of programs and degrees, which are master's and PhD degrees in experimental medicine, the graduate diploma in clinical research, the graduate certificate in regenerative medicine, as well as options in bioethics, environment, and digital health innovation. This variety of programs gives you the opportunity to choose the option that fits your needs and whatever you wanna do for, the next, for your next steps with a translational research on focus. And last but not least, students who join the experimental medicine program automatically become members of the Experimental Medicine Graduate Student Society or EMGSS, in which I am the president. EMGSS promotes academic, professional and social student development. And to do so, we organize a variety of events throughout the year, keeping as our priority all the students. For example, in previous years, we have organized kayaking at the Lashing Canal picnic at the John Mans Park, as well as our award-winning annual McGill Biomedical Graduate Conference. So make sure to visit EMGSS website listed here and to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Thank Our next speaker is going to talk about the program in experimental surgery. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Faxon Mwale. I'm the graduate program director in experimental surgery. So what is experimental surgery? It is actually the research arm of McGill's uh, department of surgery. Now we offer a lot, a lot of programs. So the next slide, please. So we offer graduate level training programs, as you can see there in surgical research uh, that lead to PhD. A master's degree, as well as a diploma or certificate in surgical innovation. Now, the PhD and master's uh, co-stream graduate programs 
these have long been recognized as uh, one of the strongest uh, in Canada. Now at the master's level, uh, in addition to the course uh, streams, we have uh, the experimental surgery stream. We also have, you also have the opportunity to choose concentrations in surgical innovation, surgical education, global surgery, surgical outcomes, digital health innovation, or you can also do the non-thesis uh, master's uh, option. Now, just to give you an idea about these streams, these streams, they actually range from learning how to be an entrepreneur uh, to improving healthcare for patients, not only here in Canada, but around the world. So we also have uh, uh, the basic translational and uh, uh, research in the areas of, that are listed there, uh, epidemiology, general surgery, oncology, orthopedic surgery, plastic surgery, transplantation, uh, et cetera. Now you may ask, how do I apply? Uh, in terms of the application requirements, you have an online application form, uh, an application fee, and then we look uh, for the transcripts. Now, uh, for the department, uh, the master's degree uh, application, you need a, a GPA of 3.2 out of four uh, in the last two years of study. For the PhD program, you need a minimum uh, CGPA of 3.5. Uh, however, you can also be able to uh, transfer from a master's uh, to, to, uh, to a PhD. So we can discuss that in the breakout room. Now, you also need the reference letters, confirmation of supervisor and project proposal, um, you know, a CV, a letter of understanding. So uh, it, when applicable, you also uh, may require to have a TOEFL or, or great results. Of course, uh, the other thing you need is a letter of intent. Uh, there is a possibility of an interview as well. Now, just to let you know that we have a very strong student community and support. Um, you may want to check out Experimental Surgery Graduate Student Society. So they offer many events, uh, monthly social events, seminars, uh, et cetera. So next slide, please. So if you have uh, questions, these are our excellent uh, administrators. Uh, we've got Sharon, Misha, Eilish, and Dora. So we look forward to seeing you in experimental surgery. So thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'm gonna play a video from Family Medicine. Hi everyone, my name is Lashonda and I'm an MD PhD student in the third year of my PhD studies in the Department of Family Medicine. Hi everyone, my name is Anish Arora and I'm a former master's student and current PhD student in the Department of Family Medicine here at McGill. Anish, I'm kind of curious, when you tell people that you're studying family medicine, do people often assume that you're studying to become a family doctor? Because I get that a lot. You know, it's incredible how often I get asked that kind of question. But at the same time, I think it's a very good teaching opportunity to explain what family medicine academic research has to offer. I agree with you. Family medicine and primary care encompasses a lot more than just family medicine, which this word cloud kind of illustrates. It's about health service research, health policy, uh, bioethics, uh, chronic disease management, and a range of other things as well. Um, you actually, as you mentioned before, you did your master's in the program and then you continued on doing a PhD. What was behind your decision to do that? So there's actually four main reasons for why I decided to stay in this program, or well, first off, to come to this program and then stay in this program. So first is community. And when I think of community, I think of our student body and also our engagement with our faculty. So when I came to this department, I realized that we have a really, really strong student society that makes sure that we are all grounded and also stay connected with each other. The second is that when we engage with our faculty, we, we actually get reciprocity. We also, we get to engage in research. We get to, you know, walk into their offices without an appointment and say, hey, look, I really don't understand stats. My stats prof is standing right, sitting right there. And uh, I think it's so important to understand qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods and participatory research if you want to work in health research. 
So I would add to that a lot of our research. Yes, we have a strong community within our department, but the research itself is also very community based. So I echo what you're saying in terms of your rationale for wanting to study in the department. And then to kind of go on on your point about postgraduate opportunities, it is true that quite a number of our graduates do go on to study um, health professions. So they go on to study medicine or nursing um, or other health professions careers. But there are also a number of other fields in which you can apply the skills that you learn um, in a PhD or master's program in family medicine and primary care. That includes um, data analytics or data science, working in NGOs, having skills to then go on into entrepreneurship or health um, innovation, health technology, um, and consulting, and also a number of our program graduates go on to do um, work in government as well. So you can hear more about family medicine by joining the Zoom room later. Now we'll hear from the Department of Human Genetics. Hi everyone, my name is Angie. I just started my second year of master's in human genetics and I'm also the president of the Human Genetics Student Society. So the Department of Human Genetics has four main programs, three that are research intensive ones. So the master's and a PhD thesis programs with the possibility to fast track from the master's to a PhD. And the Kyoto McGill joint PhD program where students have the opportunity to conduct their research at McGill and at the Kyoto University in Japan. Uh, the department also offers a program in genetic counseling, which is a clinical program that trains students to become genetic counselors. Upon completion of these degrees, our students are well prepared to pursue different career paths those who want to pursue academic studies often choose to do a postdoc or they start medical school. Those who um, want to go outside of academia go into business and startups um, in pharmaceutical companies. We are about 225 students, one third in the master's program and near half in the PhD program. And our students conduct their research in labs across eight uh, different research sites, for example, the Glenn site, the Genome Center, the Neuro. So there's really a wide range of exciting research going on in the department, and most projects involve wet lab experiments, um, bioinformatics, or both. Um, Amy, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, in terms of courses, there's one required course that puts everyone up to speed in genetics. So you can still pursue graduate studies in the Department of Human Genetics, even if you did not do an undergrad specialized in human genetics. And the other course that we take, um, we choose in function of what's the most relevant to our research projects. Outside of the lab and courses, we have a very active student life. The Human Genetics Student Society is in charge of organizing academic and social events. And we also facilitate our students' participation in different sports teams within uh, McGill's intramural league. Lastly, as a student, we are guaranteed to a stipend of 15K plus the amount of our tuition fees. And we can also apply to different departmental funding opportunities, such as travel awards to attend conferences. Now I put some um, application information at the bottom here, uh, but we can talk a lot more about it in the breakout room later. So I invite all those who are interested or who want to hear more about what it's like to be in the Department of Human Genetics to join Dr. Fiamma Mafat, Ross and I in our breakout room starting at uh, six o'clock. Thank you. Thanks, Angie. That was great. Okay, now we're gonna hear from uh, the Institute of Health Sciences Education and their PhD program. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Peter Nugas. I'm pleased to introduce you to the PhD program in Health Sciences Education. This program is in its second year, so it's quite a new program. Um, it, it's an ad hoc program, which means that it, it is new. And um, while it's been sanctioned to commence, it's awaiting full approval from the Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, next slide, please, Amy. Thanks. So, um, so why do um, a, a, health, a, a health sciences education PhD? Well, a PhD in health sciences education is about creating the evidence for good teaching and training of future healthcare professionals and the ongoing training of healthcare professionals through their career. And this is the foundation of high quality healthcare. Uh, this is um, a new and very fast growing and innovative field with extensive opportunities for intellectual contribution for employment. It draws on quantitative, qualitative, mixed methods and participatory methodologies and theories from the social sciences. Um, HSC, like I said, is a new field and McGill's uh, program will teach you how to create knowledge across disciplines and also translate the science to the clinical shop floor. 
And um, the program is uniquely placed to uh, provide you with high level transferable skills um, that uh, universities and other employers are increasingly requiring of PhD graduates. So there's um, lots of different um, substantive topics you'll encounter, like theoretical um, and methodological ways to understand um, interprofessional relations, um, assessment, evaluation, the role of equity, diversity and inclusion in, in health sciences and um, healthcare delivery, decision making, clinical reasoning, work based learning, among other topics. And also, we place a very strong emphasis on research skills and skills of communication and career building. Uh, next slide, please, Amy. And uh, actually, we'll, we'll go one more to Amy. If that's okay. Thank you. So the, uh, the vibrant intellectual community that would be waiting for you is um, is a large community of 75 uh, people from different um, different professions and disciplines and uh, who can create uh, tremendous uh, networks for learning and career development. Um, finally, in terms of employment, um, you know, from uh, this PhD, there's um, it's a very fast growing field that's professionalizing with a lot of tenure track opportunities um, opening up. Teaching in the health system is a possibility as a residency program direct, director or a nursing preceptor, for example. Research and practice in accreditation curriculum development um, in universities and the health system, educational and health policy making, and strategic learning development leads in industries such as biotech, pharmaceutical, or medical equipment industries. So you need to be accepted by a supervisor to be accepted, and applications are due on the 11th of March 2020. So feel free to reach out to us at any time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and you know perhaps in the Zoom room coming up. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Okay, now we're gonna go on to our second one of our interfaculty programs, the Integrated Program of Neuroscience. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, my name is Reza Farivar, um, and I'm the director for the Integrated Program in uh, Neuroscience. We're a very large program uh, of about, um, over actually by now 500 students and uh, well over 200 faculty. We're spread across six sites. Uh, we offer two programs, a PhD program and a master's program. Both are thesis-based and very research intense. Uh, the overall uh, neuroscience research at McGill is uh, probably one of the largest in Canada. We were uh, gifted a $84 million grant uh, a few years ago um, by the federal government because of the intense neuroscience research that goes on here. Uh, a lot of uh, different neuroscience fields are represented at McGill, including neuroimaging. We have fantastic facilities, including a seven Tesla MRI, multiple three Tesla MRIs, many animal scanners as well as electroencephalography and uh, magnetoencephalography. So we do a lot of brain imaging, uh, but there's also a very strong representation of molecular neuroscience, circuits neuroscience, neuroplasticity research, memory, attention, vision, uh, and as well as, of course, translational research uh, topics, including Alzheimer's research and multiple sclerosis, as well as neuropsychiatry and finally behavioral neuroscience. Um, <clears throat> we have increasing links across, uh, as an interfaculty program, we have representations across many different faculties, not just faculty of medicine, but also faculty of science, uh, faculty of engineering, and even faculty of management now. Uh, so uh, you would have access through, uh, to a very multidisciplinary uh, body of expertise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the application requirements are uh, pretty straightforward. Um, the, they're also listed on our website um, for the PhD and the master's. The master's is roughly a two-year commitment. The PhD is approximately a five-year commitment. Um, application deadlines are listed above, and we'd be happy to answer your questions in the breakout rooms later. Um, we also offer an under uh, we offer we offer a rotation program in the PhD where you'd have an opportunity to um, spend some time in a different laboratory before settling on one for your PhD. That and um, last slide, please. Oh no, sorry, that was uh, that was the last slide. Okay, I, I, there was a third slide that's missing. But anyways, um, I'll stop there, and we'll be happy to answer your questions at the at the breakout session. Thank you. Thanks so much, Reza. I don't know where the missing slide is. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, next we're going to hear from the uh, graduate program in microbiology and immunology. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anshul Sinha. I'm a, a PhD student in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology and the representative uh, from our department for tonight's Discovery Night. Um, I'm also the president of the uh, MIM Graduate Student Association. 
Uh, so our department is made up of 62 faculty members who study a diverse array of topics. Um, and I think the COVID-19 pandemic has sort of really highlighted the need to better understand infectious diseases. And I think that's really one of the specialties in uh, unique things about our department. We have several researchers in our department who study various uh, infectious diseases, viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, uh, bacteria, and a wide uh, number of parasites. Uh, in addition to this, we also have lots of interesting research coming from our labs that also focus on autoimmune diseases, uh, the human microbiome, and microbial ecology, among a lot of different other things. Um, so right now we have 78 grad students in our department who come from diverse uh, places and backgrounds. And I think our administration and our student organizations do a really good job of creating an inclusive environment within our student community. Uh, we run lots of different fun social events and academic events that are really great to attend and great for networking and meeting other students uh, across the various locations in our department. So importantly, our department is um, spanning over six locations, which does mean that we have access to state-of-the-art equipment and the opportunity to, to collaborate with lots of different researchers and physicians from different fields with uh, various expertise. Uh, next slide, please, Amy. Um, so we'll definitely keep an eye out for our upcoming deadlines. The closest one upcoming is uh, for the winter admission, which is November 1st for Canadian uh, and uh, permanent residents, and our summer and fall de deadlines are in the spring and summer respectively. Uh, for international students, these deadlines are moved up a couple of months for each deadline. And lastly, if you want to learn more about our department's research, our student experience, or upcoming deadlines, you can visit the department website, uh, which is listed here, or shoot our uh, graduate program director, uh, Antonius, an email at the email uh, listed here, and uh, definitely join our Zoom breakout room as well. Thank you. Thanks, Anshul. That was great. Okay, now we're going to hear from our nursing programs. Hi, I'm Jody Tuck. I'm the Advanced Nursing Program Director, and I'm here to present the master's programs, and my colleague will continue on explaining our doctoral program. So I'm going to be explaining the first three programs here, and um, you can, we have a master's of science that is for non-nurses, so if you have a, a degree in a science discipline, you can do a direct entry into practice. So I'm going to spend most of my time talking about that program. The middle two, um, I'll get to, are talking to a nurse audience, um, and the last one's the doctoral program. So our master's of science... Yep, you can just state that. Great. Perfect. So our Master's of Science Applied in Nursing, um, this is the only program like it in Canada. And this program recruits uh, individuals that have completed a bachelor degree, um, usually in the science disciplines, but we've had musicians, we've had um, economics, um, undergraduate students. The important thing is actually having the required science um, and sociology courses that are required for entrance. Um, so I encourage you to go and look at what the entrance requirements are. But this is, oh, back on the other slide slide for a second. Um, so this program actually um, is three years long and you can actually have a concentration that's such as a general concentration or one that's in global health. There's a lot of clinical hours and skills that are taught. And at the end of this master's degree, um, you can actually write your entrance exams to becoming a nurse. So it's a great way of taking science and applying it to a health profession after a bachelor degree. Next slide. The other two programs I'd like to share with you today are our programs that are targeted towards individuals that are already nurses. So we have an advanced um, nursing program, and this is a two year long program. It's really looking at developing nursing leadership roles within the healthcare system. And um, there's several different concentrations around advanced nursing um, that we have in, in global health and administrative services. Um, we also have the nurse practitioner program, which I think nurse practitioners have been in the news a lot lately and their role has become increasingly present in our healthcare system. We have primary care, neonatal, pediatric, mental health, and adult care. Um, we're the only university that actually has all five concentrations. And I'll hand it over to my colleague for the PhD program. You can change the slide. Good evening, I'm Kristen Mayer. I'm the interim PhD program director at the Ingram School of Nursing. Our PhD program is designed to prepare nurses for career as researchers, academics, and healthcare leaders. Our doctoral program is four years in length for licensed nurses with either an undergraduate or a master's degree in nursing or some other field. And unlike the, the applied master's program, students applying to the doctoral program must be accepted by a supervisor before admission. The program entry requirements are having a GPA of 3.3 or a B plus average. The, uh, the PhD program courses are a minimum of 18 credits that include three required courses and three elective courses. 
and PhD students get to select between the option of a traditional format or a thesis by publication. And in our program, PhD students have opportunities to work as a teaching or research assistant. And our successful uh, students that are being admitted to our program are guaranteed a first year stipend of 20 to 30,000, depending on the number of successful applicants. And for the following year, students are supported and guided to apply for external PhD fellowships. And I have to say that right now we have a 100% success rate at this time for all of our students that have a PhD fellowship. The application deadlines for next fall is April 1st, uh, 2022. So if you want to inquire more, like we, we can meet in the Zoom later, or you can contact me directly. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I apologize for the time. I think your slides came with timers. on, <laughs> So I apologize for the, the ghost uh -huh. in my machine. Okay, so we're going to move on now to hear about the Graduate Diploma in Oncology. Ruth McCaffrey, I'm the Graduate Program Director uh, for the Department of Oncology. The department offers a Graduate Diploma, which is a one-year full-time program that includes coursework and practicum experience. Uh, when entering the program, you'll choose one of four areas of focus. Um, this includes population and global cancer control. Um, uh, psychosocial oncology, palliative care, clinical cancer research, cancer care services, and quality. Uh, students take common courses, including fundamentals of oncology and cancer research, which provides a multidisciplinary approach to learning the full spectrum of principles and practices in all fields of oncology. Uh, furthermore, each student will select a research project and a mentor for their practicum, and this provides a real world research experience on a project that's relevant to the student's um, interests. Um, furthermore, students select, uh, students take additional courses um, related to their area of focus, um, and these can be uh, supplemented by elective courses from within the Faculty of Medicine. And so this really provides an opportunity for personalized training that can meet the individual uh, needs and interests of students. Uh, next slide, please. So looking through the uh, registration for this event, I noticed there were a number of people um, interested in oncology. Um, so for admissions, um, we have a minimum requirement of uh, G a CGPA of 3.3 and a uh, bachelor's degree in a related field. Um, admissions are once per year. Um, applications are due uh, by April 20th for international applicants and June 1st for Canadian applicants. A couple of additional comments. So it's a one year program, but you may have the option of completing it part time um, over two to two and a half years. So there is flexibility within the program. Um, currently, we don't offer, offer masters and PhD, um, but this is coming um, in the future. So for more information, you can uh, visit our website or contact us via email. Um, you can also come to the Zoom breakout room later and we'll be happy to answer questions. Thanks, Luke. Okay, now from uh, we're going to hear from otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. Hello, everyone. I'm. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I'm uh, Bernard Siegel. I'm the graduate program director of uh, otolaryngology, head and neck surgery, and I'm going to talk to you about our Master of Science program. We have a small clinical and patient focused program. We have it, it is interdisciplinary. You will have both clinical and basic science supervisors, and it's for MDs, dentists, therapists, and those with a bachelor degree, such as from science or from engineering. I only have time to talk to you about the flavors of the research going on in our department. We, for one arm, looks at treatment of cancer patients. But in parallel with that is a new basic science program where we're aiming to develop personalized medicine. So as illustrated in the cartoon on the right, you take tumor cells from actual cancer patients, extract genetic material, put it, put it into a mouse model and see what grows. Look at the cute illustration below. And here you can evaluate what therapies work best in a mouse rather than in a person and transfer the results to people. Another arm is in cochlear implants, where you insert a wire into the hearing organ of people and evaluate how well they're hearing. And you only do this in profoundly deaf people. You ask them, can you hear that? That's obvious, but you also ask them, 
did you, what emotion did you perceive? And sometimes you use novel techniques by looking at iris size. All of this leads to better positions in medicine, dentistry, uh, various therapies, clinical research, and industry. You can find out more on our website and by contacting us at the uh, email below uh, and visit us in our breakout room. Thank you. Thanks so much. We're going to move on to pharmacology and therapeutics. Perfect. Thanks so much, Amy. Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Braden, and I am a master's student in the pharmacology and therapeutics graduate program here at McGill. Um, and I just wanted to say a big thank you, first of all, for taking the time to hear about our program today. Now, we have a fantastic uh, team here to answer a lot of the technical questions you might have in our breakout room. But I really wanted to spend this time uh, talking to you about why I really think this program is fantastic. So the pharmacology and therapeutics program here is really built around uh, kind of harnessing your potential and amplifying those skills that you learned while in your undergraduate degree in order to help or in order to help you reach a successful career. Uh, and in order to do that, we kind of have a tried and true method uh, using our experienced educators that are the top of their field, uh, using um, versatile training environments to help uh, support your research and providing a student and administrative support network to really help uh, motivate you and achieve your goals. Um, if you could move to the next slide, please, Amy. Thank you. So our educators' backgrounds here span multiple fields, all the way from large-scale systems-based work in neuroscience and reproduction, all the way down to the most intricate of DNA and protein interactions and epigenetics. So you can really be sure that whatever your interest is, we have a spot for you, and we're thrilled to hear your ideas. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next up, our program features a high-impact research-focused training environment with options for uh, master's students, PhD, as well as fast-track opportunities to PhD from MSc, uh, and as well as a specialization program in environmental science, uh, if that's something that you might be interested in. We also have uh, an extensive core equipment facility that's more than capable of tackling any hypothesis you might have. And if you need a helping hand in your research, we strongly encourage collaborative projects between uh, members of our department and outside of our department in order to help push that science uh, forward for everybody. Um, you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, kind of finally, our program offers you the support and mentorship that you need to stay uh, kind of at the top of your research here. So our administrative staff are more than happy to help you navigate our program and our graduate association will help keep you connected to your peers, both inside and outside of the department through student life events such as uh, annual holiday parties, social mixtures, intramurals, research days, you name it. Um, and we also so recognize that graduate school is a major life change for everybody coming out of undergrad. And so we have launched a series of initiatives uh, aimed at supporting mental health, uh, as well as uh, promoting diversity and equality within science. Uh, if we could move to the next slide, please. So hopefully I've told you about a few of the things uh, that our program has to offer and that might interest you. Um, but just don't take it from me, uh, take it from our alumni. Um, so we have alumni within our program that have branched into every range of the workplace environment. It's uh, truly not just academia that research has to offer. We have people in government, industry, uh, as well as a variety of other uh, professions. And we're gonna work hard in order to give you the networking and career opportunities you need to make those connections and to become another member of our successful alumni. Uh, so with that, I just wanna give a big thank you to you guys and uh, we hope to see you in the breakout room where we can answer some more of your questions. Thanks, Braden. Here we go with physiology. Hi, Amy. So hi, hi everybody. My name is Al Schreier. I'm a program director of physiology. Next. So uh, we have a variety of different areas, especially um, in the department, including cell molecular physiology, neurophysiology, immunology, and cancer, and quantitative physiology. That includes nonlinear mathematics, more recently machine learning and artificial intelligence. And support this kind of work, we have a number of core facilities and resources. Next slide, Amy. You can just fill the slide out. Okay. So this includes a variety of different uh, resources. Cell Information Systems, a research group that I direct between the Bellini and McIntyre buildings. We have an advanced bioimaging facility directed by Claire Brown, a member of our department. The Center for Art Applied Mathematics in bioscience that's co-directed by Eric Cook, who's a member of physiology, and the Cystic Fibrosis Research Center, also based in physiology under John Hanrahan. In addition, we have affiliated centers, the McGill Pain Center, recently taken directorship by um, 
Reza Sharif, who's also a member of physiology, and we have close ties to the McGill Cancer Center and the Complex Traits Center. So all of this environment and support builds what we hope is an exciting, invigorating research environment and graduate training program. Next slide. And, and, and this kind of work leads on to a variety of careers I've shown for people in pharmacology, closely related area. And this includes people going into areas like bio, pharma industry, um, publishing and academia. And the next slide. And we, like the other departments, have a strong graduate program that provides different kinds of social activities. There's actually a mixer um, with and, and a training with people in actually in pharmacology. I think it's a joint training program. So we, we do a lot of different things and try and create a fine environment. And to find out more, next slide, you can just come to our breakout center or breakout room or contact us at the department. So thank you very much. Thanks, Al. And now this is our third um, interfaculty program, the Quantitative Life Sciences PhD program. Hello, I'm Celia Greenwood, the Graduate Program Director of Quantitative Life Sciences. Uh, we were launched in 2017, so we're a relatively new program and we're part of interfaculty studies. So QLS is uh, interested in students who are looking to do research at the boundary between quantitative disciplines like mathematics, statistics, computer science, or physics, and a life sciences domain, such as molecular biology, physiology, neuroscience, ecology, and, and much more. We have more than 80 researchers from more than 20 departments and five faculties that are associated with us. And currently we have about 50 students. Next slide, please. The QLS program has some unique features. In particular, all of our students do rotations during their first year. So they go through three different labs in their first year. And students then choose their thesis supervisor during this first year. So you get to try out different labs and supervisory styles before deciding on where you're going to do your research. The other elements of the program are also designed to encourage interdisciplinary research. We have a two semester foundational course that contains six or eight different modules on different topics and a seminar series that covers all kinds of different topics. Of course, after the first year, all PhD students do a research thesis in their chosen domain with an interdisciplinary advisory committee. So to apply, you need to have a strong quantitative background at either the undergraduate level or the master's level. So strong math, strong statistics, computer science, programming. And you also need to have a knowledge and training in at least one life sciences domain and some research experience. Our application deadline is January 15th. And I hope that you can join us in our breakout room to hear more about the program and to hear from some of our current QLS students. Thank you. Thanks, Celia. Okay, sorry, Isabel. go ahead, Isabel. No problem, no problem. Good evening, everybody. My name is Isabel Gelina. I'm the Graduate Program Director, and it's a pleasure for me to present our Graduate Program in Rehab Science at the School of Physical and Occupational Therapy. Next slide, please. Our program was the first in Canada to offer a PhD in Rehab Science. The program is intended for those with a degree in a healthcare discipline who are seeking to expand their knowledge and skills in clinical research related to health and rehabilitation. Next slide. We offer a PhD, two master's program, one thesis base and one non-thesis base for those who want to specialize in a particular practice area of rehabilitation. We also offer programs at the professional level with a master's applied in occupational therapy and in physical therapy, as well as two specialized graduate certificate program for healthcare professionals. Next slide. We offer a rich learning environment to our students. The research conducted by our professors and students address areas from the premature infant to the frail elderly from intensive care to the community and home-based care, from local to global communities, including prevention, intervention, chronic disease management, and health promotion. I urge you to visit our program webpage and watch our researchers' video for more information. Next slide, please. I would like to leave you with a few words from our graduate students. 
Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to meet you in our Zoom meeting room. I would say that if they're really passionate about learning new things, if they really want to uh, learn how to be a researcher, especially in a field that the ultimate goal is to improve people's lives, I would say that uh, McGill University gives you the perfect environment uh, to push yourself uh, to be a better researcher, and I would say also to be a better person. You're going to be learning the basics of research from legends like Dr. Nancy Mayo and you'll be slowly guided through the entire process. SPOT has a very well curated program, so don't be anxious and it'll all be worth it. I promise. I'm working with other universities uh, nationally and also internationally and uh, being able to uh, be involved and be productive in very diverse projects across disciplines. Um, I get asked the same question over and over again is where did you learn how to do this? Where did you learn how to write this or how to do this particular part of the project? And my answer remains always the same that I've learned this at McGill, where else? Welcome to the School of Communication Sciences and Disorders at McGill University Faculty of Medicine. Our mission is to train creative and resilient health professionals in speech language pathology. We are also world leaders in the training of researchers who work in the broad field of communication sciences and disorders. We offer small class sizes and personalized mentoring to help you achieve your goals. Our clinical master's degree program is taught by internationally recognized researchers and clinical experts. Students in our program have rich opportunities to acquire their skills with a variety of clinical populations and in different community settings. Our research trainees have access to state-of-the-art facilities for projects ranging from infant speech perception, language development, the neural bases of speech, language, and emotion, multilingualism, and computational medicine and tissue engineering. Montreal is a vibrant, multicultural city where human language and communication are always a focus of attention, perfect for enriched training in speech language pathology and for stimulating research ideas in our field. Visit our website and learn more about our thriving community. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, so I just want to um, thank you again and just a final few words. Um, so I hope you saw by all of our programs tonight that by joining a graduate program at McGill University in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, you have the opportunity to be at the forefront of cutting edge research in a variety of different areas. You've heard a lot about different programs and within each of those programs, there's a lot of diversity. So we're confident that you can find a research project that's right for you. As well, all of our programs are gonna have guaranteed minimum funding packages uh, for graduate students in the program that will give you a, a living stipend for your expenses as well cover your tuition. There are also significant opportunities for professional development that is going to help you transition from graduate programs into both academic and non-academic career paths. So graduate studies comes with all kinds of other unexpected bonuses from, from learning to manage large data sets to putting puzzles together, to be really creative and thinking, to honing your communication skills, both your, your verbal and presentation skills, as well as your writing skills. You'll get to work with other um, diverse individuals who want to share ideas, discuss those ideas. And there's opportunities for travel. You know, a couple of programs mentioned um, that you can go off and, and basically travel the world to present your data and participate in scientific meetings. And we really hope that as this pandemic sort of draws to a close or becomes more under control that we're gonna be resuming that very shortly. But then most importantly, I think what I've shown here with this little fireworks icon is the chance to be the first one to know something, to make discoveries and watch how you, those discoveries can impact the health of, of our, our, our global communities. So not only here in Canada, but around the world. So with that, we're going to ask, invite you to join a program specific Zoom room. So I think all of those links have been shared with you. You can go to those individual Zoom rooms 
as well. We'll be remaining in this main room to answer any general questions you have or help direct you to the Zoom room you, you um, should be in now. So thank you everybody for attending. Thank you to all our presenters. We really appreciated you sharing with us tonight the opportunities that are available within your programs. And we look forward to welcoming many of our guests here this evening to start their graduate programs at McGill.